Hello, how are you, everyone?、Uh, this is Kenji. And、um, let's study the Bible together. I hadn't really made an、uh, English、uh, message for a long time, so <laughs> I do apologize. Sorry about that. But nevertheless,、uh, today I would like to talk about,、uh, concerning about the message from,、uh, for the Mother's Day. And the、uh, uh, Bible, uh, the uh, uh, verse I'm going to use is from uh, uh, 1 Kings、uh, chapter 3,、uh, starting from the verse 16. Uh, if you do have a Bible, would you please open、uh, the first King chapter 3, verse 16? And I'm going to read from uh, uh, NIV.、Uh, let's read what's it written.、Uh, this is concerning about the Mother's Day. And、uh, let's study about what the Bible t a l k about mother. And let's see. First King chapter 3, verse 16. Now, two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. Whoa. <laughs> and I talk about Mother's Day, but in,、uh, you know, here、uh, there's a story of、uh, two prostitutes.、Uh, now, it's very rare for a prostitute to come to the front of the king, but somehow these two women、uh, and、uh, their questionable profession that they, they have, but they came to the uh, uh, king. And the, why they came? Because they had some kind of complaint to make. So, the,、uh, starting from verse 17, let's read this. One of them said, Pardon me, my lord. This woman and I live in the same house, and I had a baby while she was there with me. The third day after my child was born, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There was no one in the house but the two of us. Now, here, the two prostitutes,、um, somehow they become pregnant, and somehow they both had a baby.、Um, all of a sudden, They both become m o t h e r And、uh, you know, that's kind of a surprise. But then,、uh, what's interesting part is uh, uh, you know, these two ladies are living together in the same house. And uh, also, uh, it seems no one helped them besides two of them because they're the only two of them when they had a baby. And probably they both didn't have a family to help them. Uh, probably uh, they are not. Uh, rich enough so that they have to support themselves by、uh, doing some prostitution, which is a questionable、uh, job, yes, indeed. But then at the same time,、uh, they probably uh, financially uh, h a s some difficulty, so they have to do such things. And then probably、uh, they're so isolated from society.、Uh, It, apparently, they're the only two of them、uh, together, and then probably they're a friend, I think so. Otherwise, I don't know how they could live together. And、uh, probably before they had a baby, apparently they were a friend, and then two of them doing a questionable job.、Um, because their professions, I had to assume that they probably had some kind of personality that they probably didn't care about how society l o o k at them. They probably they may have a little bit, they didn't have a, you know, how I say, like, a, Uh, uh, they probably didn't care about, you know, much about their life.、Uh, so that's kind of a personality they may have. But nevertheless, what happened after this? Let's read from、uh, verse 19. That during the night,、uh, during the night, this woman's son died because of she laid on him. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while I,、uh, I your servant, was asleep. She put him by her breast and put her dead son by my breast. The next morning, I got up to nurse my son, and he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't the son I had born. Now, what happened was the lady, the first lady,、uh, let's assume Lady A, <laughs> that,、uh, she, had a, she,、uh, you know, she had a baby, but the、uh, second lady, The, the woman,、uh, woman B,、uh, she, she lost her child. She actually、uh, lay on, I mean, she slept with, the, well, both slept with their baby, but、uh, the, 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 the lady B, she g o over the、uh, baby, her baby, and、uh, basically the baby was uh, uh, died. Uh, with the weight of、uh, his own mother, and by probably、uh, suffering or choking, I would say, and、uh, suffocation so that he couldn't maybe breathe, and then she killed,、uh, the, killed her son.、Uh, 
Um, I assume that when she found, find out that she killed her son, she probably went kind of panic, I think it is. And uh, she probably thought, oh, what happened? What happened? You wake up, but, you know, baby's dead. So um, apparently uh, she has some kind of a, uh, she decided to exchange her child with uh, other woman's uh, child. And that's kind of a surprise, but she, she could have done, you know, they, they're, they're prostitutes. So she didn't care about, you know, how the other people may think. And then they, they, he, she may have a personality. She may don't mind to kind of break the law, kind of. So uh, she took uh, her friend's son and then just gave her her dead son. And let's see what happens. And the verse 22. The other woman said, No, the living one is my son, the dead one is yours. But the first one ins in, uh, insisted, No, no, the dead one is yours, the living one is mine. And so they argued before the king. The king said, uh, This one said, My son is alive and your son is dead. While the other one said, that No, your son is dead and mine is alive. Now this is kind of funny that uh, two women is talking and uh, kind of argue in front of the king and say, Hey, the live one is mine, and dead one is yours, and yours is dead, and mine is dead, and, and mine is alive, and yours is dead. And then the king said, yours is dead, and mine is dead. Well, it's kind of confusing, but kind of a, a little bit kind of funny, their, their conversation. But nevertheless, uh, one thing I can tell is the first woman, the uh, woman A, uh, she was very serious. I, know, I mean, I understand that uh, when they lived together as a prostitute, they probably didn't care. Uh, about the, how people look, uh, think about them, and they're probably very much isolated from society. Nobody really care about them. Uh, but then, as soon as they have baby, as soon as, soon as they both become mother, uh, their their most important things uh, turn out to be a, a baby, the, their uh, child. And uh, probably, uh, I can say both of them very serious about regaining their uh, uh, child and argue over the uh, uh, the live child, and um, so that become most important aspect. And probably that is the reason uh, these two end up in the front of the king because no one can kind of uh, how I say uh, settle this issue, and uh, the you know issue become bigger and bigger, and eventually. Uh, they had to take these two women to the front of king to uh, uh, make a decisions on this uh, quarrel and this issue. And probably that's what happens. And uh, But one thing I can say, the as soon as the uh, woman, even though she had a questionable background, uh, when she become a mother, the first priority become uh, a child of her. So that's interesting. Then what happens? Uh, verse 24. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, until this point, um, even though two of them argue, but then we cannot tell who's real mother, is it? I mean, uh, well, you know, uh, it looked like the, uh, the lady A, uh, who are first complained about this, maybe she could be, uh, mother, but then the real mother, but who knows? I mean, they both prostitute, so they both could have personality, uh, of, uh, you know, don't, don't care to lie people and stuff, so, uh, possibly, uh, lady B, the woman B, she may be saying truth. I don't know. We don't know. But until then, we, we don't know who's the real mother. But then, let's see how the King Solomon uh, solved this issue. Uh, start from the verse 24. Then the king said, Bring me a sword. So they brought a sword for the king. He then gave an order, Cut the living child in two, and give half to one, and half to the other. Now, what happened was the king, Solomon, in order to solve this issue, in order to find the real mother, he asked to bring the uh, sword. And uh, he said he's going to cut the baby in the head. <laughs> and then gave that uh, half of the, well, now probably, well, now the dead baby to others and the other half to the other woman. Uh, well, do you think that will solve the issue? But in a way, that can be uh, fair because of the uh, woman B, uh, baby, is already dead. So if the uh, live child's dead, 
that kind of fair, is it? I mean, they didn't have a baby uh, to begin with. And before, I mean, before they had a baby, they, they, that two women, uh, they probably was kind of friend, and uh, otherwise they probably didn't live each other, and uh, they were living in the same house. So uh, they didn't have uh, this issue of uh, who's baby and what and stuff. But uh, but here, here comes the baby, uh, and uh, the issue become the biggest issue become baby's issue, and because of the baby become very important for both of mother, and uh, so that was a solution that King Solomon had. Uh, let's kill this live one and cut it in half, and that become even. But what happened is, uh, let's read from the verse twenty six. The woman. Whose son was alive, which means the live son's uh, real mother, uh, the woman whose son was alive was deeply moved out of love for her son, and said to king, "Please, my lord, give her living, uh, give her, uh, give her the living baby. Don't kill him." But the other said, "Neither I nor you shall have him. Cut him in two." Then the king gave his ruling, Give the living baby to the first woman. Do not kill him. She is his mother. When all Israel heard the verdict the king had given, they held the king in awe, because they saw that uh, he had wisdom from God to administer justice. Now this is interesting. Uh, king Solomon uh, decided to cut the baby in half, but the real mother uh, wanted to, you know, uh, save his life. Real mother, uh, she was so deeply moved. She was so become emotional. She just cannot stand the uh, death of her child uh, right front of them, right front of her. And but however, the other woman didn't much care about uh, the life of that baby. So, um, King find out that who, who is the real mother. The real mother care the uh, her children's uh, life. The life of kids is very, very important to mother. And uh, so that to find out real mother, King Solomon decided to test them whether they will consider the life of their children the first priority or not. And as a fact, indeed, uh, the first woman uh, wanted to kind of give off her right, uh, giving the baby to others, uh, but it, but still, uh, she can save his life. Uh, now, when I think about the mother, mother, for mother, uh, the life of the children is the most important things. And just think about it, I mean, when you were uh, middle of the night, uh, when you had a baby, you had to wake up and change diapers and all that kind of stuff. When I look at my life, and uh, you know, the baby, uh, they somehow, you know, wake up in the middle of the night, and <laughs> you have to change the diaper. When you change the diaper, <laughs> You know, diapers smell bad. I mean, and then, well, after you change it, uh, you have to wipe the kids' butts and stuff. And then what's inside the diaper is that gooey stuff, you know what I mean? And it smells bad. Uh, you cannot flush that into the toilet. So uh, usually most of the house has like a, some kind of special plastic bag or like a plastic uh, container with a, a plastic bag in it. And then you just put that uh you know poo poo diaper in there even that even you put that into a plastic you know kind of container uh the smell still bad sometimes the like entire house smell like a, a poo poo diaper and then even that far you went through uh you still love to change diaper you still love your child uh but children also get sick and uh, from my experience, uh, if you have uh, uh, several kids, uh, the you know kids become sick one by one. <laughs> I don't understand it. Well, you know, the first one got sick, and the second one got sick. Uh, you know, the, the mother, mother never had a chance to kind of take a rest, and then all of a sudden, the uh, mother realized that uh, she didn't buy the uh, her clothes for a long time. The mother somehow end up same clothes uh, for many months, or sometimes you know, say you know, one year. She only had the same clothes, and uh, if she go to uh, like a 
shopping, uh, you know, first thing she look is the kids' clothes, mm. and then maybe she might look at the her clothes. But and the, the she will not, uh, you know, uh, the her priority in the life all of a sudden from herself to uh, our children. The the most important things in a mother's life is a kid and their well-being and their life, and that's a dramatic change. So the real mother consider uh, children's uh, life the most important thing. Uh, then, meanwhile, the mother become older, and uh, you know she, she just realized, oh man, I have some lines in my side of the eyes, and um, also like a little white hair starting to have like a white hair in the head and stuff. And then, uh, you know, uh, she getting older and older. Uh, for uh, uh, for a guy who watching this video, we probably notice that when you grow up, you, have you noticed that uh, your mother becomes smaller and smaller, especially around when you were high school? Uh, that's my experience. In the way I was high school, um, all of a sudden I realized my mother start to shrink. <laughs> well, of course, everyone will shrink a little bit as you get old, but, uh, you know, as a, as a uh, man become uh, uh, grown up, and uh, particularly, uh, well, for this uh, of course happened to the woman too, but you know, uh, mostly men probably feel even more so uh, that your mother becomes smaller and smaller uh, as you become bigger. And uh, But anyway, so eventually the mother become very kind of small, Person and then you know getting old and and uh, but then uh, even that mother's first priority is their uh, children and mother do anything to raise them and that's really a real mother is uh, so I see in the Bible there are two type of mother a mother of the life's children and another mother is a mother of the dead children. The uh, Bible also talks about two types of mother in another verse. Uh, let's take a look at in the New Testament, Galatians chapter 4, verse 22. If you do have Bible, I appreciate it if you open the Galatians uh, chapter 4, verse 22. Uh, let's read here too. Uh, let's learn what the other the two types of mother uh, from another part of the Bible. Uh, the verse 22 in the Gal Galatians chapter 4. Verse 22. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. His son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh, but his son by the free woman was born as a result of divine promises. Uh, here, the Abraham two sons, as you probably know, that the Ishmael and Isaac. And the Ishmael uh, came from the uh, slave woman. And according to the Bible, uh, the, the uh, Ishmael is um, uh, from the slave mother. And uh, uh, he, he, the mother is also gave the flesh to the Ishmael, but uh, is a, a mother of a flesh, mother of the slave. But uh, the Sarah, uh, I mean, uh, uh, is uh, the free woman, and the son, the Isaac, is a uh, uh, free woman, the promised son. Um, when we talk about, uh, you know, the mother, there's, according to uh, Galatian, there is a two type of another mother. One is a mother who gave the flesh, and the other mother is a mother of the promise. And let's read from uh, verse 24. These things are, uh, are being taken figuratively. The woman represents two covenants. The one covenant is from Mount Sinai and bear children who are to be slave. This is uh, Hagar. Now Hagar stands for the Mount Sinai in Arabia and correspond to the present city of Jerusalem because she is slavery with her children. Uh, so the uh, Bible emphasized here in the Galatian is that there are two types of mother and one is a mother who a slave herself and therefore the her son of her children is also slave and uh, the, uh, also uh, co uh, has a flesh. She, she is a mother of flesh. And then the verse 26 said, but the Jerusalem that is, uh, uh, but the Jerusalem that is Abab is free and she is our mother. For it is written, Be glad, barren woman, you who never bore a child, shout out, shout, shout for joy and cry aloud, you who are never in labor, because more are the children of the uh, desolate woman than of uh, her who has husband. 
Now you, brothers and sisters, like Isaac, are children of promises. Now here, uh, interesting, the Bible said there are two types of a mother. One is mother of uh, flesh and uh, a mother of a slave uh, or a slave uh, uh, so that whoever born from her uh, from her is under uh, is still slave but there are uh, another mother and that is a mother that who do not have children at uh, the barren woman uh, if if you go to church uh, there's one problem in the mother's day in the church because uh, throughout the church churches in America and anywhere in the US, uh, our world uh, in the mother's day uh, we kind of overemphasize and uh, about the mother and sometimes there's a woman who never had the children's and they feel kind of like uh, left alone and then they some of them even don't come to church on the mother's day um, because of uh, often the church ask mother to stand up and uh, you know uh, we praise them but the Bible indicates the barren woman is the one to be uh, 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 blessed because the barren woman, uh, the woman without children, uh, they are considered to be the mother of promises, prom promised child. Uh, so on the Mother's Day, uh, my church, is, uh, we celebrate both of them because the real mother is a mother who really concerned about life uh, of the children. Uh, but then the uh, the mother who gave the flesh, uh, unfortunately, their children will die. So uh, there's a ch mother. One kind of mother is a mother of a dead child, and the other kind of mother is a mother of a live child. And um, a mother of the live child is considered a barren woman. Do you remember the Bible talk about Sarah was barren woman, and uh, so Rebecca, so. Uh, uh, you know, Rachel as well. All of them are, are, are barren women uh, with a supernatural uh, intervening where the power of the Holy Spirit uh, they bear the child. So the, the key point is a barren woman is mother of a promised child. Um, then let's read uh, verse 29. At that time, um, at that time, the son born according to the flesh uh, persecuted the son born by the power of the spirit. Uh, it is the same now. But what does scripture say? Get rid of the slave woman and her son. For the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with the free woman's son. Therefore, brother and sisters, we are not children of slave woman, but of the free woman. So, the Bible is very clear about this, I think. There's a two type of mother. And one is a mother of living child. So for the mother, it's the most important thing is the life of the children. Uh, you know, the, the real mother con con concerned about life of uh, uh, real children. But then the, the mother of the slave or mother of a, a slave child, uh, they cannot inherit a kingdom God. Uh, they will cease to exist eventually. Uh, the mother can give the flesh to the child. But then the, the person who only had the flesh, uh, they, they, they eventually died. Their, their, their children are dead, uh, dead children. Um, and uh, some people are suffocated by her, uh, his, uh, their own mother's weight sometimes in life. And um, you know, the, there's a two type of mother. There's a mother uh, of the slave and their children is also slave so they cannot inherit the kingdom of God but another kind of mother who are barren women who are actually the promised uh, uh, woman the, the woman who bore the promised children and in a place like a church uh, it really a church is a family we call and that's why we call the brother and sister to each other so that all the children in the church as well they, uh, they are children of our promised kids and um, so that uh, if you you know there's a woman who never had the children uh, they are uh, considered a barren woman and they are actually mother themselves they are mother of a promise and uh, so we celebrate both you know both mother who gave the flesh and also mother uh, who gave the, uh, 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 the life to the children the eternal life uh, it's the most important things we have to emphasize here is from the king at the time of the king David. 
I mean, King Solomon, he found real mother by questioning the life of the children. And my question here today is, uh, which mother are you? Um, if, if uh, you ask, or King Solomon asks, uh, we have to kill your, your children, what we will do? Um, do you consider the life of uh, your children? Uh, or you don't care about the life of your children? The real mother will care about the life of the children. The real mother uh, like to see is a life in their child. Uh, the real mother's child going, should have an eternal life and able to inherit. And they are inherited by the spirit, the spirit-born uh, child. Uh, is, and then the mother who, uh, uh, the barren woman is a mother of that spirit child. Uh, and then, that the, the the slave woman or the woman of the dead mother uh, dead child uh, mother of the dead child uh, they unfortunately uh, cannot inherit the kingdom of God uh, their children will eventually die uh, and perish eternally so the key issue is uh, in a, in the Bible the real mother is the one that we should celebrate and their barren woman and the real mother is the one gave. Uh, the eternal life to their children. The real mother consider the uh, the children's life the most important things in their uh, her life, and uh, uh, that we should see you should see that in our church. Um, so that's my uh, story for today, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, you enjoy the uh, uh, message. Uh, shall we pray together? Lord, thank you for your word today, and uh, this is the message about the uh, Mother's Day, and we we see the two type of mothers uh, in the Bible. One is a mother of a promise, a mother of a light child, and another one is a mother of a slave and a mother of dead child. Um, hope that uh, many people will born from the mother of a promise, and uh, they will have eternal life. Lord, so please lead us, and uh, thank you, Lord, for all our mothers, and thank you that uh, you gave such a blessing to every uh, woman and barren or um, uh, uh, or having a child uh, doesn't matter. They are both, all of them, are a mother of uh, either dead or alive child. Thank you for today. Jesus, we pray. Amen.